Right, morning. Uh, we're reconvening the battle. This is the start of turn 10. Turn 10's been pretty uneventful. The French had initiative and they formed up their infantry battalion in Bapelot and brought up a, a second column in support. Their third column charged the Nassau skirmishers and drove them off with casualties. They've fallen back to the Nassau line there. Uh, French skirmishers moving up into the balance of that little village. Uh, and otherwise, for the Allies, the Nassau, the two regiments of cavalry, uh, have reformed, and the Hanoverians have just straightened their line while the French 2nd Infantry Brigade has started moving forward. On to turn 11. So, turn 11. And the French have initiative, and um, they've got uh, all of their brigades active, the Hanoverians uh, and the Allies also. French are too far away to do any charges. The Allies charged with their light dragoons. They've charged against the French battalion that's on the flank of the built-up area. They have successfully passed their test they have formed square. So now we need to do the actual outcome of the charge. So Charlie and I will both roll our dice. So 2d6 Charlie and we'll see what the result is. So the British get a 7 and the French have got a 5. A 5, all right. So let's just have a look at the table. So both units are line no general attach, not charging on, not heavy cavalry, no other cavalry adjustments, neither are unformed. Infantry in column or square versus cavalry, so yours are plus two, so you become a seven, Charlie. Not cavalry versus cavalry, no one's got any significant casualties, I don't think. The French infantry battalion's only got one, and the light dragoons have none. So no casualties for either, so it's a charge result of 0-2. Cavalry vs Infantry, Cavalry retire with one casualty and the defenders stand. Uh, yes, it's actually a draw, both sides take one casualty. So the square repels the Light Dragoons, they retire and they'll unform the Hazars that are behind them as they pull back. We're at the end of turn 11. The French have further consolidated their hold on the village. The middle uh, battalion of this regiment has formed up now in terms inside Papillot, and the skirmishers and the second battalion now occupy the right hand building from their perspective, and the third battalion remains there in the square, and their chasseurs have moved up in support. Meanwhile, on this flank, the infantry brigade continues to advance with their skirmish green thrown out in front. They've had some success. The horse artillery battery has knocked out one of the Hanoverian skirmishers, and the French skirmishers caused some casualties on the British foot battery. It's now suffered three casualties. In return, it's again hit one of the advancing in infantry columns, so it keeps hitting, causing casualties, and are unforming those battalions that are moving towards it, but they're still making steady progress. That's the end of turn 11. Let's see what happens. On turn 12. Start of turn 12 and the Allies cavalry brigade has gone hesitant, everything else is active and the faltering Nassau brigade which uh, lost its small battalion of riflemen, which is actually a rifle company, uh, went faltering but has passed that test. All three French brigades are active and will now roll for initiative. So the French had it last turn and the British dice roll is on minus one. British get Seven minus one is six, and the French six. get six, and they had initiative last turn, so the French keep the initiative for turn 12. Right, well, the Chasseurs have had a tremendous result. Uh, they rolled a 10, and the Hussars, who were um, unformed in a hesitant brigade with nine casualties, have just been run down. So the uh, Chasseurs have now got a a uh, 21 inch follow on move, and within an inch they just hit the edge of this Hanoverian line battalion. Uh, and we'll see how that goes. 
If they win that, then they've got another unformed cavalry regiment uh, well within their charge range. They can probably go through to that final Hanoverian battalion if everything went brilliantly for the French. Let's see how these Hanoverian infantry get on. We'll do another charge test now. Let's have a look at the charge table, Charlie. Uh, that's getting the charge table. So two dice for both of us. Rolling for the allies, five. Four and a six. And the French have got ten. That doesn't bode well. Let's have a look at this. So those Hanoverians fortunately have no casualties, but they are recruits. So their four gets five, goes down to four. Um, and they are infantry in line versus cavalry, so it goes down to two. And that's it. What do you roll, Charlie? You rolled a ten. Yeah. You've got five casualties, so that makes it a nine. But nine against two, you're going to rout us in terms of charge results. Cavalry versus infantry, six plus. The defenders are ridden down, uh, and the cavalry take one casualty, but keep on going. On and into the hussars. This could be pretty much the end of the game. Right, we're on uh, turn 12. We've completed the firing. There's been an exchange of skirmisher fire with the British artillery battery. They took an extra casualty, then up to four, so their firings have reduced effect. The French battery fired at the skirmishers, didn't really have any effect this turn. There are two infantry battalions, three infantry battalions are moving up in support. Uh, this one is now in quite threatening range of the infantry bat battery, foot battery. Over here, the French have just consolidated the position in the farmhouses and the skirmishers are now niggling away at the end of the Nassau line. Now to the critical hand-to-hand -hand combat here in the centre. Both of us start with five dice. Let's look at the melee adjustments. So, uh, no one has any commanders attached, so we're both regular. No heavy cavalry, no lancers, not... Uh, uh, large, yes. Charlie, you get an extra dice because your chasseurs are large because there are eight bases there. No uh, melleeing with a land. Casualties. You lose a dice, Charlie, because you've already got six casualties. Uh, the Light Dragoons lose a, cas lose a dice because they are unformed. The hesitant. Yeah, that is only in the charge results, not in the combat. So that's four dice to me, I think five dice to you, Charlie. Yes. Fours, fives or sixes. Oh, that was pretty good by the British. What do you get? Three casualties for the British. Two. Two. So the British have one. A winner by one, cavalry versus cavalry. Winner take the ground unformed and the losers retreat. All right, we'll do those moves. And see where we go to from here. Right, turn 14 is the, sorry, turn 13 is the next turn. The Prussian reserves of three infantry battalions are due to arrive on turn 14. I think for the next time we play this scenario, we might have to bring them on earlier because it's all over. As a result of the ADC rolls, the Allies only had two ADCs. The Nassau Brigade is faltering, the Cavalry Brigade is faltering, and the Hanoverian Brigade is also faltering. So uh, I only had two ADCs, so I decided to sacrifice the Nassau Brigade, as it had already taken quite heavy casualties and was going to continue to be whittled down by those skirmishers. Um, so it was probably going to go fairly soon. So I sacrificed that one. I then rolled for the Hanoverians, and they rolled a one. So they also have uh, broken and fled off table, uh, leaving us with one sole cavalry regiment, which did indeed pass its test, but with one light cavalry brigade against three, although heavily bad damaged, chasseur uh, regiments, uh, three infantry battalions in the village, and four about to overwhelm this flank uh, and indeed take it. Uh, I can't see any way back for three battalions of Prussians facing seven battalions of French already in place in a village with cavalry support and an artillery battery. So, congratulations, Charlie. Glorious victory. Well done, mate. And uh, see you again next time.